Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. In this video, I want to do a couple of things. One, I'm going to explain to you what this device is, and we're going to do that in a little bit. But first, I wanted to talk about the new variants of COVID that are coming out, specifically Delta and beyond that Lambda, the new spike of cases that we're expecting to see, and why you personally should work your ass off to try to make sure that you don't get these new variants. Even if you're the kind of person that you think that like, you know, uh, you know, I've got a good immune system. If I get them, I'm just going to shrug them off. You know, I might even venture to say the vast majority of people that get COVID, it's not that big a deal. Most of the people that I know that have gotten it, it was just sort of like a little bit of a tightness in the chest. It wasn't a huge deal for them. That said, there's other people that have an atrocious uh, experience with it. You could be one of them. There are other people that have died from it. Clearly, you could be one of them. But even if you don't think that you're going to be in one of those groups where you're going to have an awful experience or you're going to die from it, even if you knew for a fact that you were going to have a real ble a breeze with it and it wasn't going to be any problem at all, I'm going to explain to you why you should work your ass off, like I said, to try to avoid getting it. And it's not to protect other people. I know there's a lot of people out there that have no, you know, no sense of kind of concern. It's like, you know, as long as my experience with this is fine, I don't care if I get it to the old lady down the street that's not a big deal that's her problem not my problem even if you're one of those people you should work your ass off to not get it I'm gonna explain uh, why that is right now the reason and uh, this has kind of been my feeling since uh, a couple of months into the the COVID outbreak, you know, at the beginning of COVID, you guys might remember, you know, China was shutting down cities. I mean, they may or may not. I, don't, I still don't know whether this was confirmed. They may or may not have been welding people into their houses. It was looking like something truly terrifying was brewing in China and about to release out into the world. It, although at that point, it already had been released out into the world. Uh, but there was a lot of concern that it was like this is the one. Now, after a while, we found out, you know, this isn't the one. This isn't that that horrifying monster virus that's going to kill a third of the population. That, 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 this isn't that. Um, as soon as that kind of became evident to me, did I start dropping my guard? No, I didn't. And there's a real uh, specific reason, and I think it's a good reason, why I didn't drop my guard. Now, uh, obviously, you know, uh, we still, you know, there were still question marks, you know, maybe I would be one of those people that would have a terrible experience with it. Maybe, you know, my boy would be, you know, you, you don't know. I mean, it's kind of a roll of dice. Of course, it's like, a, it's a many sided dice and the number of sides that come up with horrible cases are, you know, not that many. So, you know, the chances of getting this and, you know, not having a bad experience with it are pretty good, but still, I'm working my ass off to try to make sure that it doesn't come into my family and it has nothing to do, well, I'm not going to say it has nothing to do, but it doesn't, it's not because, it's not explicitly because I'm afraid that I'm going to have a bad experience with it. I could, it could kill me, that statistically it could happen, uh, but it's not very likely and despite that, I'm still really working super hard to try to make sure that it's not uh, getting into my family. Why am I doing that? Because that seems kind of crazy, like why am I like going through all these, uh, all these efforts to try to uh, protect myself from something that you know probably isn't that dangerous. That sounds kind of crazy. Well, it would be crazy unless I'm doing a lot of this stuff because this has been an excellent dry run for something really terrifying. I know for myself, I've been into prepping for a long time. Uh, you know, I know many of you guys coming to my channel, you see me as like, oh, that guy's been doing it forever. It feels like I have been doing it forever, but since COVID, I've learned a lot of things. This invention was born out of COVID. I've learned a lot of skills. I've learned a lot of techniques. Uh, and I've been having an opportunity to practice these techniques in a real world, almost like kind of drill situation. And I don't want to demean it by saying it's a drill situation. It's been horrible for lots of people. Lots of people have died because of it. Uh, but it has been kind of like a dry run for something truly terrifying. Preppers all the time are talking on their channel about like, oh, you know, you should do like a, you know, a weekly, you know, nuclear fallout drill. Like, you know, get your family ready. It's like you sound the alarm and everybody has to pack up their bags and run to, you know, your, your, your shelter or whatever. You know, preppers are always talking about practicing, uh, you, know, uh, you know, going through the drills, getting ready for the, the aliens to airdrop the bird flu infected clown zombies, getting ready for the asteroid to attack. Uh, you know, practicing all these skills. You know, they're all uh, oftentimes out at the range, uh, you, know, you know, firing off you know their weapons want to stay sharp want to stay ready uh, you know practice you know makes perfect uh, and a lot of preppers have completely abandoned any of that thinking if there was there any thinking about that uh, if it was indeed thinking that led to all those other things and it wasn't just you know you know, whatever, something else. But uh, a lot of preppers have completely stepped away from that thinking about like practice makes perfect. You know, you want to, uh, you know, uh, rehearse these things, uh, you know, to get better and better at it. Uh, 
when it comes to COVID. Be, I don't know why. I don't know why, but I have been taking full advantage of the opportunity uh, to be doing, uh, you know, the types of things that you would do during a really dangerous pandemic. You can go out in public and you can wear a respirator and, uh, you know, you don't come off as a crazy person. Although, you know, the past couple of weeks, uh, you know, in, in my area, I think it's down to maybe like maybe 20 percent of people are still doing masking, even though, you know, a lot of those people, uh, you know, they haven't been vaccinated or anything. Uh, even with the vaccines, it's not total protection. Um, uh, it's a, a, it's a real opportunity lost for people who aren't taking this opportunity to practice because you uh, you know you can do, like I said you can be out in the real world you can you know do some of these protocols uh, you can and you can make sure that they work you know test to see if they work because uh, if you can avoid getting COVID or if you get COVID even better it, well, <laughs> say even better but I mean that would be a, a demonstration that your uh, protocols didn't work you know if you uh, are practicing your protocols for avoiding getting a respiratory borne illness and you end up getting COVID, you know, it's just, you know, maybe you're one of the lucky ones and it's just like a, a tightness in your upper chest or you get like just that kind of like a cough for a while or whatever, but you get it, you know, you were doing something wrong. And wouldn't you like to find that out with COVID than airborne Ebola? I was good at Ebola. It's like my most horrifying disease ever. It's like airborne Ebola. Wouldn't you like to have had a lot of opportunity to practice and find out what mistakes you could potentially be making? Uh, you know, before there was something, you know, truly terrifying. They could, you know, kill a third or half of the of the population. It, like that had huge death tolls, huge chance of of you know permanent injury and and you know well you know fatalities. If you can track something, it's a huge, huge, huge opportunity lost to not be practicing those skills. Now, if you are a prepper and you are not practicing these things, when we have a great opportunity to practice them, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy that you are throwing away this opportunity, especially if you, again, are like one of those people where you're like, oh, we gotta do a, you know, a, a practice drill in case there's an, uh, an asteroid coming in. If you are practicing for asteroids coming in and you're not practicing for some kind of a, a pandemic disease threat, especially when you have this excellent opportunity to do it, it is absolutely out of your mind crazy. And I question whether you are a prepper at all or if you are just a crazy person that kind of uses the cover of being a prepper to try to like legitimize the crazy things that you do. If you are not prepping and taking this opportunity to practice, it is just crazy. Have I said, I've probably said that six times in a row already because it is so true. Take this opportunity, up your game, practice your skills now. Delta is coming and you know, do what you can to try to protect yourself from it. Whether it's getting a vaccine, and you know, I've done a lot of research on the vaccines. I, I, I feel like, especially if I was in one of the, um, uh, uh, the groups that is particularly vulnerable to COVID, the vaccines do seem like they are fine, and I would go for those. I'm, I'm gosh, you know, I, Hoople's cat is gonna, you know, criticize me for that. I'm still on the fence about it for myself personally because I only spend about two hours out in public per month. Uh, you know, we go out to the grocery store, you know, once every two weeks, we're there for an hour. Everything else is just outside. Uh, you know, I have very, very minimal exposure. And, um, you know, and again, like the risk to myself personally is is very, very low. So uh, there's a very low chance that I'm going to be, uh, you know, contracting anything from someone and there's a very low chance that I'm gonna be giving it to anyone. Uh, again, you know, if I was in one of those high risk pools, I think I already would have lined up and gotten the, uh, the vaccine. I think it, it, had, it, it seems like it's, it's reasonably uh, safe. I mean, the, the number of people that have had issues with it is, is super, super low. I think I would definitely be lined up for that. If I had a job where I was constantly going out into the public, I think I would have the vaccine already. Uh, the only reason for my uh, particular situation that I haven't gotten it is just because I have so incredibly, uh, such a small amount of exposure. I'm out two hours per month. Somebody that's out 10, uh, 20 hours per month, which is, you know, all, that's almost hermit level in itself. You know, most people are out a lot more than that. Uh, you know, someone that's out 20 hours a month, they have 10 times the opportunity to get exposure you know, is compared to me. So that's for me personally, that's a decision based on my lifestyle. If your lifestyle is not like my lifestyle, if you're out an awful lot, you should really consider, uh, you know, uh, doing something like that to give yourself some extra protection. Not, and it's not total protection. Keep that in mind. It's not total protection. Even if you have the vaccine, you should be doing all these other things to try to protect yourself. Cause if you are the kind of person that, uh, you know, is older, is overweight, has any of these kind of like, uh, you know, other underlying issues that could give you a bad experience with COVID and you've been vaccinated, if you're walking around 
like you are bulletproof, you are not, eh, there's the deer flies again. You are not bulletproof and you should be doing these other things to try to protect yourself. If, if you were concerned enough to get the vaccine, you should be concerned enough to do the other things like real respirators, you know, social distancing and, you know, like I do, try to limit the amount of hours that you're out there. If you can cut your hours out in public, what? it's a fly flying around me. If you can cut your hours out in public down by half, you've cut your potential exposure down by half. Uh, okay, so that's why you should definitely be trying to do your best to try to avoid getting COVID right now. One, it could save your life. It could save other people's lives. But even if you don't care, oh, it's a deer fly. Nah, I'm not going to get it. They're too smart. They're too smart. They're evolving. Uh, but on, uh, on top of all that stuff, it's a great opportunity to practice right now. You want to know if you have holes in your protocol now ahead of if there was some kind of a worse disease. And as a prepper, you know, we're all there thinking, you know, there could be some kind of really terrifying disease someday. Take this opportunity right now. Practice. If you fail and you get COVID, you need, you know, you'll know that you need to up your game, fix something to do a better job. Okay, enough about that. If you're not sold already, there's nothing I can do for you guys. Uh, what is this? This is a part of my upping my game. We've had a sanitizing uh, unit at our house. It's a big rack. I've done videos about it. I'll put a link here to the video that we've uh, uh, that I made about that. Works super well, it would seem. Uh, and I, um, you know, I, I use that whenever we bring anything back to the house. Mail comes to the house, goes to the sterilizer. Groceries come into the house, go through the sterilizer. Person comes in, <laughs> we, don't, we don't sterilize people. Uh, but people stay outside. Um, but this is something for moving around. Um, if I am out and I, uh, you know, one of those grocery trips or something like that, and I have something that I, I want to sterilize, but, uh, you know, I don't want to wait till I get back, I don't know what that might be. Uh, you know, per se, you know, it could be anything. If something comes up and I want to sterilize something, I wanted a way to do that. So I built this and this is, uh, a, it's an old bucket uh, from staining the side of my house. And it has a couple cool features, a five gallon pail. And one cool feature is it has a pour spout right in the top here. And this pour spout, you know, I, I, I don't know if these pour spouts of this particular size have a particular name, but this pour spout is just the perfect size for sliding one of these uh, you know, little uh, light socket, uh, little lamp holders through. Uh, I was able to get it through the, uh, the little holder there, and then once I got it through, screwed the light bulb on from this side. Obviously, you couldn't fit the whole light, light bulb through. And uh, it just goes right down in there, and I can put things in this bucket. I haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna be lining the inside of this with foil, the bottom with foil, uh, and maybe put a little rack off the bottom so it'll kind of suspend things up so light can wrap all around it. As I'm working with it now, I kind of sterilize one side, flip it over, sanitize my hand, sterilize the other side, kind of do it that way. Get some aluminum foil on the top here. I just use liquid nails to glue the uh, aluminum foil down. That's something you can just get for a caulking gun. Uh, that that's, seems like it's worked pretty well. It's, uh, it's kind of drying and holding everything in place there. And uh, what's great about this is this light bulb is 26 watts. Uh, it's just a regular uh, you know, wall plug here. If you're here in the States, it's a regular wall plug. And I can easily run it off of a car inverter that I've got. Uh, so I just plug it into here. And I plug this guy into, I actually bought this a while ago. It's a, uh, you know, the cigarette lighter, kind of 12 volt, uh, you know, plug for your car. You can get extension cords for that. That has like a male and a female on either end. You can plug it in. So I can leave this in the back of the car and I have the cord run into the front of the car. And uh, it's worked out, uh, you know, really well. I've been just been rocking it for a couple of days. And it's nice to have the option to kind of just throw something in and sterilize it you know, reasonably quickly. So I've used that to up, up my game uh, one extra step. But again, I'm, I'm relying on the old stuff, masking and limiting how much I'm out there. While I'm here in the car, there's another piece of gear that I've uh, been carrying since the beginning of COVID, and that's my COVID bag. I always have my EDC bag, goes with me everywhere. Once COVID started, I added uh, this extra kind of medical bag. And what do I have in here? I've got wipes. Everyone was going crazy for these wipes uh, at the beginning. Of of the pandemic. I bought them before the pandemic really started, so I didn't have to go crazy about them. Honestly, I haven't really used these that much. Uh, the only time I pull one of these out is when I go to a gas station. I'll pull one out and, uh, you know, as, as I'm at the gas station, I'll just kind of use it on the buttons, use it to sanitize my credit card when I pull my credit card out. Uh, that's pretty much all I use these for. Everything else I've been sanitizing with UV light um, or, you know, hand washing uh, as opposed to using these things. Uh, I've got this little thing. This is just a Ziploc bag with the uh, old shoelace. I think that's a shoelace. Uh, attached to it. This is my really stylish satchel. 
that I can put uh, credit cards and a couple of those wipes in when I go into a grocery store. Uh, and this makes it so I'm not taking uh, dirty cards and shoving them back in my wallet. It's a way of kind of controlling where I know where the uh, uh, potentially contaminated things are and they're all on the inside of this and the outside of the surface when I, when I touch it. Uh, what else do I have in here? Just trash bags, extra, extra trash bags. Uh, they come in handy for a, a number of reasons. I haven't used them related to the pandemic, but I've been going camping recently and I pulled one of them out because we thought we forgot my boy's raincoat. So I made him kind of a, uh, a quick little poncho with one of the uh, trash bags and some duct tape uh, to uh, throw the whole thing together. And I also have some duct ta tape in here. I think that's a little bit overkill for this pandemic. Uh, that, is, that was the idea, you know, you could cover yourself up and tape up, you know, tape gloves onto you. That doesn't seem like that is something that, you know, for someone in my position where I'm out very infrequently that that comes up. Although I guess if there was someone that I wanted to help that was coughing profusely, uh, you know, maybe I'd want to take some extra precautions uh, or maybe just kind of avoid them and call for help. Uh, what else is in here? Uh, we have respirators, a bag of respirators. I like to cycle through. These are all the clean ones in here. I also have some rubber gloves in there. And, uh, you know, I have not used these uh, since the pan pandemic really started, but uh, eye protection in here. Again, this would be something if you, you know, were going through an environment where, where a lot of people coughing or you knew, it's like, you know, I am damn sure that most of the people in that crowd are contaminated. You know, you know, you might decide you want to throw these kind of things on you. What else do we have in here? Uh, I've got some extra things that aren't directly related to the pandemic. Uh, I'll, I'll jump into those last, but I uh, also have some hand sanitizer uh, in this bag couple bottles of hand sanitizer and I, I started kind of uh, turning into almost kind of like a, a bit of a, a generic medical bag. I also have a uh, emergency blanket in here, got some sunblock, you know, there's all sorts of threats, protect yourself from the sun too. Uh, and even down to uh, potassium iodine tablets there in here as well. So that's what we've been doing kind of since the beginning of the pandemic and I really do feel like now is the time to up uh, one's game because uh, uh, evidence of past success is not a guarantee of future performance. They say that in investing. I think just because you and I uh, may have survived through the first couple uh, waves of of the the pandemic uh, doesn't guarantee that we're uh, gonna you know get through this next one unless we kind of up our game. Whether that's getting a vaccine, whether that's upping your protocols, whether that is you know uh, staying back, uh, you know socially distancing yourself a little bit more. This one, this Delta one, is different from what's come before. So your uh, reaction to it should be different. Uh, it is twice as likely to infect you. So I mean, by some uh, mathematics, you should consider that your response should be twice as intense. So uh, take this as an opportunity, even if you think you're one of those people that's bulletproof and you're not going to be one of those unlucky people that, you know, is fit and healthy but still has an incredibly horrible reaction to it. It happens not very frequently, but it does happen. It could happen to me. It could happen to you. Take that seriously and start upping your game now. And even if you just don't believe that could happen, like I said, this is an excellent test situation for something that has like a 30% kill rate in the future or a 50% kill rate in the future. Take this as an opportunity to make sure that your procedures actually work because the stakes are high for a lot of people with COVID, especially if they're old or overweight or have like asthma or breathing issues or things like that. But for the vast majority of us, the stakes are reasonably low compared to other pandemics. And it'd be great to take an opportunity and find out if you have holes in your protocols right now. That's it. Thanks for watching. Good luck. Up your game. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.